Hey, what's up? It's Trini. Welcome to part four of the virtual reality haptic feedback build. Let's remember where we left off. The goal is to allow the player to actually strike a video game enemy by having the robot dummy in the exact location of the virtual dummy, but in the real world. In the last video, we put together our first working proof of concept prototype. It was awesome, but it was a bit flimsy, a bit ugly, and couldn't actually withstand a punch. So now we're going to make one that actually works. It's going to look like this. If you're not that interested in the build and you just want to see it work, skip ahead. In this video, we're going to build a fully functional, ready-to-go prototype. Let's look at some of the changes to the design. The base is going to be much broader. These designs are actually a bit old and we're not going to use wood, but instead mostly steel and aluminum with more cross braces. Uh, also notice the extended wheels on the side and back to prevent the dummy from tipping over when it's struck. The humanoid dummy will just be this Bob boxing dummy. The electronics are going to be the same as before, with the exception of the motors, which need to be beefier, and the motor controllers, which need to accommodate the higher current of the beefier motors. Everything that can be screwed down is screwed down, and everything else is held in place for now with high-level engineering techniques. When looking for bigger motors, I found this beauty, which runs at 12 volts at 410 watts, for pretty cheap, all things considered. 410 watts is over half a horsepower, which is absurd. Unfortunately, I noticed one major drawback. It's so freaking loud. So instead we're using these motors. To attach them to our frame, we need to affix this collar. We'll be using 90 degree aluminum stock. Oh, hi Sandy. And some flat aluminum stock. After cutting and drilling, we have all the parts we need. Here we'll affix the steel stock to the base to create the basic structure of our frame. We'll attach caster wheels to the bottom. We'll affix the motors. The platforms are then added then a cross brace, and finally some temporary wooden wheels. To fix the dummy, I cut a hole in some scrap wood, which Bob can fit into. Clamp it down and introduce Bob. This back platform is to stack bricks if we need more mass at the base. Let's try it out gently. Note the new wheels. Alright, a bit rougher. And now we'll test out the movement. And even a bit rougher. I don't want to wail on it just yet. And I'd say things are looking good. Now let's paint everything black. And here's our final product. Actually, if you don't mind, I'm gonna make this section a little more cinematic.
noticed there was a sneak peek of the sword fighting embodiment that my buddy Chris made. We've actually gotten super wrapped up in this project and totally inspired. We've actually gotten so excited about it that we decided to incorporate. We're a company now, it's SciFighter LLC, so we're gonna see what we can turn that into. I don't know, see where this project goes. We actually have a website too if you want to check it out, that's scifighter.com, C-Y-Fighter. You can contact us through that link if this is something you think you'd be interested in or you have some suggestions or any comments, that'd be really fun, we'd love to hear from you, and you can contact us from there. We've actually already made a number of improvements from what you just saw, but that's for part five, but it's been redesigned to be a lot more stable, it can now take the force of the hardest punch I can throw at least, and honestly I think it looks a lot cooler too. So yeah, check it out, and I couldn't be more excited about this project.